Um, this business is is kind of ingenious in the sense that, I mean, what would you call yourself? A warehouse play? A, a real estate play? I mean, explain this a little bit. We build, own, and operate the physical infrastructure, the foundations for our customers, servers, and their data. Yeah. Supporting 5,000 customers across six continents on their digital transformations. Right. So basically, I mean, I'm going to really put it the way you guys probably don't want, but, you know, you've got giant data centers and that kind of thing filled with different customers who use different kinds of technology, and you're more... You're not a utility, but you're operating kind of just th that model of, so how much of this, you know, maintenance or anything like that really falls on you? So we're really focused on the physical infrastructure. So think about your typical commercial real estate on steroids for redundancy and connectivity. Our customers are putting their private workloads as well as the public provi cloud providers landing with us and having seamless connectivity uh, amongst their data sets. So talk to me a little. So we talk about real estate. We talk about AI. I mean, what's the AI play here other than the fact that the more people are using artificial intelligence, the more computing power they need, thus the bigger warehouses, I assume, and the more you know, bigger rent checks you collect? So, so we're in an industry that's been growing for a long time now. The company's almost 20 years old. We've had these called digital transformation waves of demand after demand. Cloud computing was the most recent and the largest. And AI is just hitting the, the scene right now. And I'd still say it's in its infancy is talking about new use cases that typically need higher power densities and cooling features, uh, but a long runway for growth that we're helping support our customers on their digital transformation journeys. Sure, and the only problem with people watching is going, wow, that's a great way to put kind of the picks and shovels for the gold mine type thing is, well, you know, the PE is over 100. You know, people, you've had an amazing year and people have thought this through and realize you're sitting in a pretty nice position. How do you justify a multiple like that? Or what, are, what is the growth you foresee where people could say, yeah, I got in at whatever the price you're in now, and I was still able to look at how they compounded this over the years? You know, so we're, first off, we're in the real estate category. We are a REIT, the first data center REIT. So you typically look at a called uh, FFO multiple or AFFO multiple that doesn't deduct depreciation because our assets are, are appreciating over time to normalize. Uh, we made great strides this year. Uh, on our customer value proposition, we've had great quarterly signings and uh, second highest new lows uh, just this past Thursday. We've been bolstering our capital sources, uh, made great progress on that front as well. Uh, but we've got more room to run and more progress, and we see a long wave of demand ahead of us. Uh, that we're looking to step up and serve our customers. Yep, and Jim Chanos, who our audience is familiar with, has been short data centers like yours for probably over a year or about a year now. Interestingly enough, the short interest in the stock looks like it's falling a little bit. It's about 6% at, at recent check. What does that tell you? you no, know, I've been saying we were a show-me story this year. I got into the seat at CEO at the end of December. Uh, we said we had to make some progress on our customer value proposition, our funding model, our deleveraging. Uh, in the last two quarters, we made a lot of progress on that, and I think uh, we've, we've shown up with those results, and the investors have taken notice. So what do you do as other people presumably start flooding into this space or really looking to kind of, you know, eat away your profit margins and the opportunity here? You know, uh, the pendulum on supply and demand have moved in our favor. Uh, we've seen uh, moratoriums. We've seen power constraints on transmission and generation, nimbyism, uh, and the kilowatts and megawatts are becoming more and more precious, and the cost of capital is no longer free. Uh, and we've called to uh, build a large runway of growth for our customers. We bolster our, our, our capital base, uh, and we think we're going to be able to continue to propel our growth uh, with that backing. Does it get more expensive the hotter it, uh, the hotter it gets outside? <laughs> uh, we do. It does get a little hotter with, uh, with the air conditioning units trying to cool the servers, but uh, utilities are a pass-through in our business model uh, to the end customers, and these are critical, mission-critical needs for our customers. They can't just turn the data center off uh, when you're hitting 100 degrees uh, uh, Fahrenheit. Give us an example of the range of customers you have. So we have 5,000 customers. So you can think of the largest customers of the large cloud service providers and tech uh, companies ranging to general corporate enterprises and network service providers, major financial institutions. But enterprises ranging called numerous industries from healthcare to retail to manufacturing uh, of all sorts. Do you think there's any danger of there being a bubble of excitement around AI? I mean, you know, I know it benefits you in the long run. I know it's priced in now. But, I mean, even for you, do you look at this and go, like, okay, this hype cycle, the reality is going to be a lot um, kind of more nuanced to play out? There's no question artificial intelligence is going to change the world we live in, hopefully in, in a better framework for, for all mankind. Uh, I don't think that the hype cycles are related to digital realty and data centers. Uh, we are providing foundational solutions for the AI to happen and the innovation uh, to be unlocked. Uh, it's not just been a, our stock did not jump 100% uh, in, in a day or anything like that. 
Uh, we have the physical ingredients to make it happen. Uh, and I think we got the wind at our back. And you pass through the utility costs, which is maybe the most genius part of the whole thing. <laughs> Andy, thanks so much for your time today. We appreciate it. Thanks Hope so to much check for back me. in soon. Andy Powers, the CEO of Digital Realty Trust.